He watched the video at least 50 times. No, seriously, who watches a video 50 times looking for a word that you didn't hear when it was actually shouted at you or allegedly shouted at you in real life? He never wanted to hear the N word. The hell he didn't. Why was he listening to it 50 times? Brinson definitely wants to hear it. There's no other explanation for a 20 year old, 27 year old healthy person sticking an audio tape to their ear 50 times over the past 15 to 16 hours unless they want to hear the N word. He's claiming like, oh, I heard the N Stop it. That's because you want to hear it. If someone's looking off in another direction and shouting some word and waving to a mascot, uh, just stop. Let me, let me add this though. Let, let, just let me go give you a little bit of context because I'm going back to my column yesterday. In case you missed it, you know, the Colorado Rockies mask, mascot whose name, nickname is Dinger, the fan was seated right behind home plate and he was with his grandkids and he claimed he shouted for and waved at the mascot because he wanted his grandkids to take a picture with the mascot. His explanation makes perfect sense. It's backed by video and audio proof. But as I explained in yesterday's column, racism is a new form of gold. Like gold, Allegations of racism have a super high value because of the difficulty in finding it. Its shiny, attention-grabbing, image-enhancing impact is nearly impossible to match. Just think, some dude walks into a club, big gold chain on, everybody makes the assumption, oh man, he's special. He must be rich. He's different. He's cool. He's something, big gold chain. Same way we feel about racism now. Oh my God, if I'm a victim of racism, he's special, he's cool. He's a, a, a different type of person or a superior type of person than everybody else. Let's just think about how powerful allegations of racism are. Think of this, an allegation of racism turned career criminal and drug addict George Floyd into the second coming of Martin Luther King Jr. Just oh, think about that. George Floyd, career criminal, fentanyl addict, in a t-shirt, passing off a fake $20 bill, high as a kite behind the wheel of a car. In an instant, in nine minutes, he becomes Martin Luther King Jr. Had a black police officer kneeled on St. George's neck and shoulders no one would know George Floyd's name. There certainly wouldn't be murals and statues commemorating the last nine minutes of his life. That's how transformative racism gold is, even when it's fool's gold. And I know many of you are gonna hear that and think, oh, here go Whitlock again, taking a dump on St. George Floyd. But I'm just sorry. We've gone way too far with the adulation, celebration, veneration of George Floyd. It's a joke. It's a tragedy. What happened to him? He played a gigantic part in contributing to that tragedy with his actions, but there's no damn reason to turn this guy into the second coming of Martin Luther King Jr. because a white police officer kneeled on his neck and shoulders for nine minutes and the combination of fentanyl and COVID in his system, along with the police officer on his shoulder and neck, caused him to die. Everybody played a role in George Floyd's death. It wasn't just Derek Chauvin. George Floyd played a role in that. 